What's going on everybody, Jose or Freestyle here. We are both forgot our Raptor Center, we thought they have um, all types of birds, right? We just come pick up Georgie. Hi Georgie! Okay, we're going to see some birds, we're going to see some wild birds, maybe some domesticated. Oh shit! <laughs> Whoops! Yeah, so I gotta make a hold it. They have this shot where they take boat for a long time. This uh, slow motion shot where I want to get from a bird, right? The, the fly towards um, somebody with one leather glove, right? So that shot, <laughs> that shot, the water look for the most right now. But we're gonna see if we could get it. Look like they don't have a lot of people today. So in a way, it's kind of good because uh, we're gonna get more like undivided attention, right? Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Um, my name is Marcia. Welcome to the Belize Raptor Center. You guys can take the front row because we don't we don't have anyone. Okay. Oh, wicked. <laughs> Okay guys, welcome to the Belize Rocker Center. At our center we do rehabilitation, we release and also we rescue. The birds that you guys are going to meet for our bird shows, our normal bird shows, is birds that unfortunately cannot be released in the wild. And as each one gets out of their, their um, crate, you guys will understand why they're here. And another important note is these guys don't live in the crate, they have their huge enclosure mm. of their own. Okay. So this one here is our Plumbia Skite. His name is Skylar and Skylar here was been poached, kept as a pet for several months. In that process, this little guy here imprinted on human. Imprinting means when they see us as equal, they think they're human and we're, we're, we're the same, which is completely wrong. And that means they are not afraid of humans and also they depend on human to provide food. So for this little guy here, you guys, when you walk and you hear him making calls, mm -hmm. he's actually begging. Yeah. That's what a little, that's what a nestling would do in the nest to the parent. Mm. And Skyler here, um, knowing all of that for the month being kept as a pet, he was fed wrong chicken, which didn't have the right nutrients for him to have a. To, he didn't have a good start in life, mm -hmm. and he had. When we got him, he had metabolic bone disease. A disease that is not reversible, a disease that is not curable. He lived with that, he got that, and there's no way we can fix that. And uh, knowing that he has the metabolic bone disease doesn't allow him to have proper good of feathers. So he, his feathers usually break and break. And there's no way we can fix that. Knowing that he's migratory, there's no way we can release a bird that won't make it to its destination. Here. And also he's very big. He, he, he keeps begging. Mm. So more than likely he's going to spend the rest of his life here. He's gonna spend his 35 years here. So Skyler here, um, Columbia Skite, their habitat is in Pine Ridge, um, open fields, pine savannas. Also their main diet are grasshoppers, insects, commonly seen hunting for grasshoppers and also eating in the air. So they are known to hunting on the wings. That's what mm -hmm. they call it. And that's why he's at the center. He's a pet. And having a raptor as a pet is a very bad, bad decision. Because these guys go through stages, stages that us humans don't understand and also we take it as a threat to them that they are attacking us. They're not attacking us, it's just they're displaying like normal birds would, normal raptors would. And us, we don't understand bird language, so we're gonna be like, oh, we don't want this pet anymore. People who just want to get rid of it. That's when the Belize Raptor Center goes in and rescue this bird and try to see how we can work with these guys. We got a call. First department got a call from a neighbor saying that their neighbor has a, a, a harp eagle and they're afraid that this this harp eagle would get big, grow up and start eating their kids. So what they decided is decide to report their neighbor that they should rescue this bird and that they have a bird that they have a harp eagle. So the first department went confiscate the bird from the, the people and send the bird to all. So people don't realize that birds actually only look like babies in the first couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Eagles take a bit longer, but usually within a couple of months, within the, about two, three months, they are fully developed wings. They look like adults for most part. 
So people thought, oh, it's a baby carpy. It's gonna. It looks like this now, but give it a couple of years, months, it'll be big. That's as big as he's ever going to be. He will never get bigger than that. Babies got most birds of prey are fully developed by the time they're 12 to 16 weeks old. So they need to learn how to hunt, kill, and thrive in that time. That's why most chicks don't make it to adult, so they don't learn quick enough. Yeah. Skylar, Skylar. See the weight of his clip. Because mm -hmm. he doesn't fly, because he has that metabolic bone disease, he needs to fly enough so that he doesn't get too heavy. Because if he's overweight, he's actually putting more pressure on the joints. So we need him to, we want him to exercise, but he's quite lazy. As you can see, he's yeah. like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it my, yeah. If you come closer, I'll come for sure. So this is Maya and she's our orange breasted falcon. Mm -hmm. Maya here um, came down with a breeding program. Breeding program that's going on about 18 years now in Wyoming. These guys are about to go extinct. Their numbers are declining. Reason why is because loss of habitat, also human persecution, and the competition in their own species. Maya here, last year, she came down with her six siblings and um, there's a hack site all the way in the mountain pine ridge where they would release these guys and the people that was doing was monitoring these guys noticed Maya wasn't coming out of the box she wasn't as active as the others so what they did they pulled her out and they did a checkup on her and they noticed she had cataracts in both of her eyes so by next year she's gonna be completely blind throughout the 18 years of breeding the orange breasted falcon and to bring back the numbers they only had three inbreded birds so far and Maya is one of them and again Maya is very lucky and Belize is also lucky that they decided to leave Maya and have her as an education ambassador and let her meet kids or kids meet her because there is like a it's a 50 50 or maybe you know there's little bit of percentage that a kid would actually get to see an orange breasted falcon in the wild because mm -hmm. not a lot of kids have this opportunity to go to the mountain pine ridge so the only um, exercise we do for Maya knowing that she's about to go blind is we do glove exchange so she knows that the glove is a safe place for her so if anyone wants to participate mm -hmm. we are here to have you pop on your glove and this is what Maya does every day just to know that when she goes completely blind she knows that Mm -hmm. Touching this texture, mm -hmm. knowing the the word. If well, birds really don't understand words, but once they are out, a phrase, a, a, a phrase, pitch of voice, mm -hmm. stuff like that, they They'll understand. Get, yeah. So there is nothing that can be done towards the, the cataracts. Procedures there would be, but then she would need daily eye drops to keep it from reforming. So she, even even with procedures, it would still need constant maintenance to run, and the risks of surgery wouldn't would be quite high as well. So cost benefit it wouldn't really there was a meeting like the so you had the peregrine fund sarah who runs the center they had a big meeting about whether or not it was worth the worth the risk to send her out and get her procedure if she's still going to be here either way mm -hmm. if it was worth the risk and decided they may as well just let her do it if it gets to a certain stage they might re readdress the issue but for the yeah. time being they're just letting it be take care of her yeah No. We don't pet no. neither of It's right. when you realize an animal, a bird of prey, this is how you injure someone because the feet is what kill. And even from her eyesight, she understands that this is not natural. So mm. she'd get very weirded out by fingers touching her and stuff. Okay. That moment we had just now. <laughs> we had a bird of Still eye contact, eye yeah. Contact. <laughs> I felt something. <laughs> you can actually see her beak. There's a little kind of tooth just before yeah. the just before the actual edge of the beak. That's actually what she uses to sever the vertebrae of her kill. So she grabs it at high speed, and then the beak fits in between the bones of that of that bird's neck. Twick twist, taken care of. And that's it. That's it. Game over. Beak's carries it ready. back. Carries back to the nest for safety. Yeah. So she'll never really go to the ground for food. She'll always stay high in the canopy. Yeah. So yeah. 
Genetically, though, was quite funny. Falcons have more in common with parrots than they do with hawks or eagles. Oh, really? Yeah. What, what makes, um, what are the similarities? Just genetically speaking, they've done genetic tests and parrots and falcons have been moved close together on the, on the tree of birds. Um, eagles, vultures, hawks in the same group, owls are on their own again. So the birds of prey are actually split into three separate groups. Just mm -hmm. genetically, there's a lot they have more in common. Makes more sense when you realize a hawk's or eagle's beak isn't actually that dangerous. It's not as powerful as a falcon's. Mm -hmm. And falcon or a parish has quite a serious bite on it. So this little guy here, he's a free flighted bird, so we will have you sitting down for a little bit. Oh. This is jamming our bat falcon. Smallest falcon we have in the country. Ooh, there he goes. We got this little guy, Tropic Air was like the Lee Dropper Center. You guys have a package, you should pick up this package. And we went and picked up this the package and we opened the box, it was a little bat falcon we got. And the condition that he was being kept was the kid only dropped food for him and left the area. They didn't associate with him, they didn't have no contact with him. So he knew a hand was the provider for him. So he imprinted on that and also, he imprinted on it and also he knew that it was a food provider, so he didn't care. But all that he knew is that he's scared of humans. His normal diet is insect hunting fur bats and hunting along with bats. And they're commonly seen on roadsides. Um, they're widespread in Belize. So he knows where the food hides. Mm. So he's like, yeah, yeah, he's... There it is, sorry. <laughs> so you guys met a kite and also a falcon. Now we're going to, you guys are going to meet an owl. Ooh, the owl. <laughs> this is our... Boy. <laughs> that largest we have in the country. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that a one wearing called as such? <laughs> Which one that I want to call as such? Mm -hmm. That full white. <gasps> oh my goodness. Morning. Ooh. 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 Ooh.
So was he raised by um by humans or by other? Okay. Whoa. Our center was very reasonable with people. We understand and we try to it's, we try to make it as a community-based organization. So Zion here, the lady that had him, was a single mom with four kids trying to trying to make ends meet with you know. Yeah. And she decided to if she raised this eagle, this hawk here, she can make some money eagle for sale for two hundred dollars. Oh, they thought it was an eagle. <laughs> Connor said he's been he's going a long way now. Like he actually enters through the door and start working in here. So when we would work him, he and if he doesn't want to do what we want him to do or what we are trying to make him do, Don't what he'll do is just flip over and act as if life is over for him. So we think that he came up with the idea that maybe it's because of the it was a female figure that actually kept him and mistreated him oh. so he had a thing for female he doesn't yeah. trust okay. it's very tricky to work with these guys you learn a lot and also they teach you a lot <laughs> they teach you a lot of things when it comes to training See you later. <laughs> How much for the shirt? Uh, 40 bucks. fishing bird so its hands are long just like Zion's osprey yes so this is designed to get into water grab a fish pull it back out nice and quick <laughs> yeah. uh, almost uh -huh. <laughs> so what do you think Pedge? Uh, really nice right George? you like it really cool really cool you liked it Georgie you didn't like it you didn't like it why, why I'm pretty sure she liked it. She was laughing when the hawk was flying right over her. Which one of your favorite bird pets? I, I think the spectacle owl. Spectacle owl? Yeah, I don't want them to look unreal, bro. They look like one little bear, one little, one little stuffed, stuffed owl. Three. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank